Hello, good evening and welcome. Today, again, something a little bit different. What I found um, while cleaning up this IKEA Spooka lamp, which is basically a little nightlight for kids, and it seems that here in our household we have misplaced the AC-DC adapter for this, for charging, and Sadly, IKEA did not specify the polarity of this thing. Usually most of the devices are center positive, but um, could be the other way around. And I can't exactly see where the black and the red lead go, but we can see already the rechargeable batteries inside. And yeah, well, they do have some manuals online showing how to get this crazy thing out of there and how to replace the battery. Um, they don't say what the charger is like. Well, it does say that it needs 5 volts, I think. What does it say here? Uh, no, not even. It doesn't even say that. It says LEDs 0 0.77 watts. Hmm. Well, I guess it's 5 volts. Usually they use 5 volt power supplies. Mm, but using something less is probably not hurting. Um, so I would say let's open this up. Let's see if we manage to do that. Mm, could be harder than anticipated. How does this open up without destroying? Well, I can open up it up here. But down here it's a bit more difficult. I have to be careful. It seems to be a very cheap product. Then again, I don't want to throw it away just yet. Hmm. One moment please, I will pause momentarily while prying this open. Alright, so this is really a cheap product. This was not meant to be serviceable, which is a bit sad. And also the missing markings are not good. This is of really cheap quality. Um, there's quite a bit of hot melt glue in there. Quite a few drops, I think. Or it's just shoddy, shoddy molding. Probably the latter. And I haven't really seen anything this cheap. So what do we have here? Well, there's this circuit board with the LEDs. They sometimes still flash a bit. You can see that here. So there's a very small residual charge. These are BYD nickel metal hydride batteries. 3.6 volts, yeah, obviously, because it's three cells, with 550 milliampere hours. So quite, quite the small ones. So each has 550 milliamperes, I think, which is not much. I think you can get like 800 or 900 in the good ones. There's a tiny micro switch here, triggering, triggering everything. There's the LED circuit board, and those are three pin LEDs uh, with a little of this uh, insulating material, a couple of resistors, red, red, brown, gold, and brown green, brown, gold, I think, probably, yeah. Um, what do we have here? An unmarked 8-pin chip, completely devoid of markings here. Then a couple of transistors, S, uh, let's see, there's an S9012. One S8050 and another S8050. 
So diode here, two diodes, and a couple of resistors. Looks pretty cheap, hand soldered. Um, I can already see here's the negative terminal. The negative terminal goes here, and this is basically the outer shell, yeah. The positive terminal goes here, 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 and over there. Positive goes through there, goes through the switch. Okay, here's the trace. Okay, through a diode, okay. So, let me think. This here should be the positive, or the center terminal, let's say it like that. And the center terminal on both ends goes to the diodes and to the switch. So it's center positive, I would say, which is the norm actually. Um, do you want to go for a bang? I have a 5 volt 2 ampere charger here, still in the box. We can get some snips and unpack this. And with a little bit of luck you will see a nice explosion here. Hopefully not. Let's check. So this one here is 5 volt 2 amps. <laughs> it doesn't say. People, why don't you label your devices? So let's bring out the multimeter, right? Plug this in. By the way, I already do have one here plugged in. What do I have here? What what kind of supplies this? Let me quickly check. I have a bunch of those. Some are nine volts, some are five volts. I do have one nine volt center negative for the Sega. So let's check. I'm assuming center positive. So I get, oh, okay, I'm set a negative on this one, minus 9 volts. So this is the 9 volt supply. Ah. Let's take a look. This is the 9 volt center negative, obviously. What do I need this for again? Oh yes, for the Roland sound canvas. The Roland sound canvas, so the Japanese devices like... Um, you know, Sega, Sony, Roland, they seem to use a lot of the center negative stuff. Maybe it's a Japanese thing, but I think uh, most of the European ones should be center positive. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I'll also probably note when this whole thing blows up. So let's check this. I'm still assuming center positive on this one. So we get 5.5 volts. That should do it. Let's put this quickly aside and pray that everything's fine. All right. It works. Yeah. So um, this particular version of the Spooker is definitely center positive. Uh, quite the bright LEDs actually. Probably you can, no, you can just switch them clicking off, clicking on. They're probably color changing, that's probably why they are three pin, right? Yeah, look at this. Now they're changing colors. I'm not sure if you can see it because the exposure is probably way off. On this one, 
but they are fading in and out now they are turning green clicking twice doesn't do anything probably stops the animation and three times turns them off again okay so there's some kind of small microcontroller in this chip and hopefully it also has some form of um, charge protection overcharge protection I'm not sure of this cheap thing I should look up these three pin um, transistor style thingies one at least one of them is mark Q so it should be a transistor but I will look up the data sheets very quickly one second please all right so um yeah those transistors are basically just simple PNP silicon transistor and a two NPN transistors probably for some switching of the uh, light emitting diodes I guess um, what also comes to my mind is under this heat shrink there's probably a thick fat resistor I guess for current limiting I mean um, the black and the maybe maybe one of these transistors maybe this one here is for switching off the the charging maybe this is the charge protection I would guess because this is probably the current limiter very crude charge circuit I guess and this probably turns off the charging when a certain voltage is reached on the cells they are already getting a bit warm so there's definitely some charging going on I think I've had this lying around for a year or so at least without usage so I'm not even sure that the batteries will still be good anyway um, yeah sad that IKEA didn't make this more serviceable the manuals available online suggest a different story but my speaker also looks a bit more different ah oh, look at this here on the back it actually says 5 volts DC 500 milliampere but not the polarity so but we figured that one out we had no bang so far I see no swelling of the batteries that's good I will try to put this back together a little bit of this is cracked but we can glue this I think this is very cheaply made anyway and yeah then we're good to go uh, well I can't really recommend these they are very cheap the components are interesting but also very very I mean I could may have made it better and I'm not very good at soldering look at these resistors sticking out and the solder joints look all well I think as bad as I'm doing them so there's nothing lost here you can maybe salvage the components but I don't know the 8 pin uh, I see without knowing what it is and you can't probably code it properly yeah so interesting thing neat little device but very very cheap